Well, welcome to the uh, third of uh, eight videos looking at the symbolic frame. And during this uh, particular video, we're going to look at uh, ceremony and ritual, and we're going to look at heroes and heroines, and we're going to look at stories and the uh, the actual power of stories. So let's start off with uh, and and do that list in reverse order. Let's start off with heroes and heroines. So. If you look at uh, these, uh, at least in my life, three heroes, um, you probably know the first one. The other two you may or may not know. So uh, the first one, uh, when he came into power in South Africa, uh, really faced a difficult choice. He had a, a country truly on the edge of uh, financial ruin. He had uh, uh, severe challenges associated uh, with the repression of groups within South Africa and he had to make some difficult choices he couldn't do everything he had to prioritize what he did and he was able to come in and and actually perhaps ironically uh, he chose to fix the financial underpinnings of the country and get it back on stable ground and, and he was criticized for that but but it became a hero going through the process not only because of his time in prison not only because of the manner in which he led uh, a, a national change and, and had apartheid uh, retired from the uh, landscape in South Africa but also also for his leadership uh, while he was in uh, power in terms of uh, making choices and in terms of, of reinforcing through personal example uh, what we may all strive to be. Wesley Brown, the, the gentleman in the, the center of the picture, always reminds me of that as well. You probably don't know Wesley. Wesley was the first African-American graduate at the uh, Naval Academy and uh, 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 suffered through uh, horrible treatment uh, while he was there. And it, it, It's interesting, uh, uh, President Jimmy Carter was actually a midshipman at the time at the Naval Academy and came to the defense of, of Wesley. But later in life, uh, um, many of the uh, officers went into the Navy, went into the Marines, and uh, realized that they had behaved poorly and treated Wesley poorly. And uh, Wesley had this certain charm associated with him where uh, when they would come up to apologize, uh, he would go, I, I think you have me confused for someone else. Uh, I always remembered you as a friend. And that's always uh, struck me, uh, that sense of charm and grace and ability to rise above the settings and to reframe it um, and, and instead of being an adversarial uh, relationship, a relationship filled with pain, uh, to make it a relationship uh, filled with hope. And the last gentleman over on the right, that's uh, Jay Farrow. He's actually a good friend of mine. Uh, he's the uh, CIO, Chief Information Officer over at the American Cancer Society. And uh, Jake had uh, a great corporate job, was making lots and lots of money, um, and uh, setting the world on fire. And then his uh, wife uh, caught cancer and uh, uh, regrettably died from cancer. And Jay, uh, at that point, gave up that lucrative job and um, gave up the, uh, the pennings that went with that uh, to become the CIO at the American Cancer Society to help as he could. Uh, in memory of his wife, to fight cancer and to bring together through technology um, all of us so that we could, you know, harness technology to advance research uh, uh, for the American Cancer Society. So anyway, uh, three examples of heroes, two of which you probably know, uh, or I'm sorry, one of which you probably know, and two of which you don't. Let's move on to stories if we can. So stories and fairy tales. Uh, and this is a great quote from the book, why I have a perfect memory, I even remember things that never happened. Uh, and I, I think this goes again to the, uh, the, the power of the organization. Uh, but uh, if you look at Denning, Denning uh, back in 2005 had these eight kind of functions of stories. You can read through them there. And there are a couple of examples that, that highlight how stories and myths underlie, undergirt an organization. And, and shape perception. You know, the, the, the founder of Marriott, 
was well known for every time a, a new manager would come into the hotel to walk through the hotel with the manager one-on-one -on -one and, and highlight all the things that were not up to standard so that it was very, very clear what uh, Marriott stood for, what the company stood for, what the standards and expectations were, and what the role of that manager was going to be as a leader uh, within that organization. You also have this idea of ceremony and, and, and ritual, and uh, these can be extremely powerful. Uh, the, the, the playing within the military, the playing of taps at night. Uh, if you've ever been to a military funeral, uh, not only where they play taps, but where they do roll call, uh, it's gut-wrenching. It, it, it is something you'll never forget. Uh, within my own organization, uh, you can see the picture at, at the bottom there. We have dinner at the uh, CIO's house for all new employees and for groups when they have uh, a substantial uh, accomplishment. It creates an opportunity for, one, them to see me outside of a coat and tie I'm actually cooking hamburgers and hot dogs for them and uh, people are playing pool and ping pong and relaxing a bit but also creates an opportunity to thank them for their hard work and to emphasize that the work they're doing is worth doing. Um, uh, Praise and Progress is another example we gather all our employees together monthly and we give them two, two minutes uh, well 15 of them two minutes and uh, during that two minutes, they talk about the thing that they're most uh, proud of, you know, their personal greatest accomplishment since they last talked to the group. And then they get an opportunity to thank folks who have helped them outside their immediate group. And it, again, it becomes powerful in terms of celebrating the successes that we have within an organization and then celebrating um, uh, or thanking those who helped us, that none of us or on this journey alone that we can work together. So these ideas of ceremony and ritual help us to socialize and stabilize and reassure others and convey messages. Going back to praise and progress, whenever one of my employees thanks someone who's uh, outside of my organization completely, I always th send them a thank you note and, and, and uh, let them know that they were mentioned, you know, they were praised in our praise and progress and with uh, almost 100 percent certainty I will get a note back from them thanking me and my organization for how we work with them and how we are you know being in, uh, innovative and transforming the lives of our faculty and administrators and students and so this this allows us to use this opportunity this this ceremony this ritual if you will to uh, 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 reinforce the values of the organization and I think you know the difference between the two ritual is what we do every day it's how we do things it's the gathering around the coffee pot uh, ceremony a uh, little bit more special uh, a little bit uh, um, uh, less frequent grander more elaborate if you will so that brings us to the end of this uh, video this is the third of uh, eight videos looking at the symbolic frame in the next video, we'll start looking at the role of culture.